Stencil is powerful, and as a result of being powerful, it can be somewhat complicated. Learning the basics of it and building some simple games really helps enable you to make intricate and complicated and beautiful games as you grow in your skill. So I'm going to walk through in this tutorial how to make a two-player Pong game. All the assets, all the images and characters, sprites, whatever you call them I use, they're going to be linked in the description below. They're public domain. They're available to you as well. So let's get started. Click create a game. I'm going to click right here. Blank game already selected. Next. Oh, Pong game. Oop, I already... Pong it is. All right. Create. And here we are. I'm going to start right off by this scene contains no scenes. Boop. I click on that and I'm going to name our first scene level one. It's good for organization that you get into the habit of naming your scenes um, in sequential order of level, right? Level one, level two. So create. And we have a blank scene. Congratulations. I'm headed over to dashboard because now we're going to add an actor type. Click. And this game contains no actor types. Click here. Okay. And we'll call this, um, I believe the paddles I have are green and orange. Being partially colorblind makes that interesting. Um, but I'll name this one green, actor type. There we are. So I clicked actor type, right? I went boop, we made the actor green. Now here I am in appearance. I'm gonna add a frame. And I'm going to keep in mind scale four, that would mean one fourth the size of the image. This isn't times, it's dividing it by four. So scale one means the exact size. I think my image is a bit large, so I am going to size it down by four and we'll see if that works. Choose image, uh, let me navigate to downloads, and green paddle, open. That looks teeny tiny, um, but that might actually be a good size for the game. Let's hit add and test it out. All right, there we are is our animation. I'm going to hit way up here, add to scene. Which scene? Well, level one. And yeah, that actually looks like a good paddle size. Great. Um, to help me out, I'm not always good with this stuff. I usually use, I'm going to click way up here, show grid. And then I'm going to click the magnet because that will make sure I stick to the grid lines. It just makes things more even looking. If you already added a background randomly, you do need to be on layer zero to be able to click down on a sprite, and you'll want layer zero at the top so that you can access it. Otherwise, your sprites or your characters or your actor types would be behind other stuff. All right, let's start with this guy here. Just click down once, because we only want one copy, and then I'm gonna hit the mouse button and navigate back over to dashboard. Okay, I'm gonna need another actor, right? And my other actor isn't gonna be green. Let's hit save on all that. It's going to be the other player and I'll name them orange, create. And same thing here, no animations, click and add a frame. Okay, I'm gonna size it down by four because I think my image is pretty big anyways. And open, and add. All right, so now that that's all set up, I'm gonna hit add to scene. Same scene, we're just gonna add it to the other side. So let's see, I was one in, one in. That looks good. Awesome. All right, so we're off to a good start. Now let's head back to the dashboard, okay? And there's a few, I hit save. I'm now gonna add the ball. So click here to add, because in Pong, well, you have a ball to bounce back and forth. All right, appearance, click here, and a frame. Okay, and I am, again, I'm gonna use divide by four again. So let's see, because I believe that's good for my image. And there is the ball, add. Add the scene, add, okay. Oh, and see, it's even still a bit big, right? That doesn't look like the best size. So I'm gonna click down then, and I click on the mouse, boop. 
I'm going to resize it some. I'll leave it a bit large to make it easier to test, honestly. So, all right, there we are. And let's go back to the dashboard. There's a few more things I need to add and then code. So click here to create actor type. And this is just going to be the walls, right? The roof or the floor or whatever you want to call it. So create. Add animation, add a frame, choose animation. I think this one I can stick to a size of one, right? Instead of dividing it down, I think it's the right size already. Roof, open, add. And now add it to the scene. The scene, okay. All right, and I'm gonna put it up here and I'm gonna click down there as, as well. Okay, because it can be at the, both the top and the bottom. It's going to have the same properties, so that will work great for us. All right, and now I'm going to save all this. Then I'm going to hit save all this again, and let's get into some of the code that we will need for this to function. We can start with, uh, well, let's start with the orange side because we're going to do something slightly new with the green. So the orange side, let's click on it, and then what we want is events, and we want to make things bounce off of it. Uh, well, we want to be able to control it with the up and down on the keyboard, right? This is two player, so up and down on the keyboard. And then the green one's going to have W and S to control it. So I'm going to click now that I'm in orange. You might have gotten here too just by double clicking there. If you were in this, orange. I'm going to click add events, basics, and then on to win updating. Win updating is what is constantly run. So what while the game is going, this is always checked. And so any key keyboard or control stuff you want to do would go in this when updating. We should rename when updating because as programs get more complicated, you will have no idea what when updating is. So I'm just going to say move movement because this is going to be controlling the movement of orange. So when updating, I need two things. First, well, two things from here, if and otherwise if, because I want to know if they're holding the left key. If they're not holding the left key, I want to know, wait, are they holding the right key? Oh, whoops, I meant if they're holding up. And if they're not holding up, I want to know if they're holding down. Because those are the two keys that matter. If they're holding up, go up. Otherwise, if they're holding down, go down. I'm not using two ifs up individually, because if they're holding both keys at once, both those ifs would be true and they wouldn't move at all. So I'm not going to allow that. I'm only going to have the computer check if the up key is being held down. And if it is, they'll go up, and then it skips the otherwise statement. If it's not being held down, then it will check if the down key is. All right, so we got that. Now user input. There's two ways to do this. Way over here, I clicked on user input, and I'm dragging it out and dropping it in. I'm then going to click on control and control. Okay, and now I'm going to select up. Okay, so if up is down. Now the other way is I will show you on otherwise. Otherwise, if user input, right? I just clicked on that little down arrow and it has it all here. It's kind of handy. Boop. Choose if down is down. And then finally, over in actors, way up over here, actors. And now once I'm in actors, I'm gonna click on motion right here. And I need three of these, set x speed to zero for actor. I need one at the tip top right here and then one inside of each my if and my otherwise if, okay? So we don't wanna control X obviously because we're going up and down. So we're gonna switch that to Y. This one at the top, I'm gonna to set to zero because we wanna make sure if this is gonna be running, I, I believe it runs each frame, which is something like 30 times a second. We wanna make sure that the actor, the character immediately stops when the user lifts their fingers off the keyboard. So we wanna make sure every time to set the speed to zero and then, oh wait, if they're, if they're holding these down, then it will be a different speed. But otherwise the default speed by putting this outside the ifs is zero. So now if they're holding up Y speed, it's kind of weird if you're familiar with scratch, it's similar to that. And that to go up on the Y or, I don't think that's scratch, code.org. Uh, to go up on the Y graph is negative. So negative 15 would send the user up. And then down here, if they're holding the down key, we want to go down on the y graph which is actually positive okay and so that should take care of this for us now we need to go into the physics 
because we do have to, well, control the physics. Uh, let's see. Cannot be pushed. Yeah, we don't want the pong, the paddle, to be able to be pushed or moved by the ball. So it cannot be pushed, a platform. Also cannot rotate is what we would want it to be. Okay, and these should be, that will be fine. Friction, we don't want it to slow down the ball. So I'm going to set that to zero. Okay, great. Now we're going to do something very similar for our other pal paddle, our other green paddle. However, I'm going to save all that. Well, we'll get into the problem, right? So here's the green paddle events, just like the other one, add event basics when updating. I'm also going to name this movement so I know what's going on. And I named them the same because this is movement, but this is movement on the green. Whereas, whoops, this is movement on the orange, right? I know they're not the same thing. Uh, when updating, so let's do what we did before, if and an otherwise if. And then we could use user input, right? Control down, drop that in, or I could click right here, go to user input, control is down. Now I'm gonna click control and again, and notice, so I want to have two people playing this. They only have these possibilities. There's no W or S key here, which will make it difficult for two hands to fit on a keyboard. So, so what we need to do, I'm going to go up here to settings. And in settings, we have all these options, which are super helpful for a lot of things. But right now we want to go to controls. And here were the defaults within controls. I'm going to scroll down, click here to add a new control. That is what I want. And what am I going to name it? Well, I'm going to get rid of that. And I'm going to name it W because it's, um well, it's a W. And then I'm going to click here and W. Okay. So W is going to be up over here. S, click here, S key. And S will be down. So now those should be options. Okay. Now let me click control. Control up and there's W for up and control S for down. Perfect. All right. And then just like before, we're going to go way over here to actors and within actors, we actually got to click on motion again and set X speed up here oh, oh, and then inside my if statements. And again, we don't want to set X. We want to set Y because we're going up and down. First, we'll make it default to zero. And if they're holding W, we want Y to go up. And to go up, we actually have to subtract still. And Y to go down for S. And there we are. Save. Let's do the physics one more time. Cannot be pushed. Yes. Cannot rotate. Can rotate. No. And I believe... Oh, yeah. Let's get rid of the friction. Because we don't want the paddles to slow the ball down. Save. All right. Now let's go over. Here's my dashboard. The ball's open for me still here. Okay. And let's go to events. Now for the ball, it's a bit different. Add event, basics, right? But when creating, okay? So on the ball's creation, we want it to be given a speed and a velocity. Uh, we want a velocity and a speed and all that. It doesn't need to keep doing it every second. Otherwise, well, the ball wouldn't bounce in any direction. So we're going to do when creating, and then upon its creation, what do we want? We're going to do actors, motion, and we're going to set the velocity. So my direction is going to be, I want it a bit off to the side so it's not direct. And the speed, I don't know, we could do 20 and see how that goes. Okay, maybe, yeah, 20 sounds good to me. Um... That looks good. Now we need to do physics. Okay, so for this, affected by gravity. No, because the ball's gonna be going back and forth, right? So we actually are gonna remove that effect. And then we are going to. And then we're gonna do heaviness. Let me actually, I'm gonna hit save. Let's double check this on gravity. So let's test it. Whoop, and I missed the ball, so it's hard to test. Let's try that again.
<laughs> we should stabilize a few things. All right, let's get rid of that. Let's say yes, um, and we'll double check on that one later. We need the, ah, well, it's going to be hard to test it. Bounciness is going to be one on the ball. So let's set the bounciness to one, friction to zero. Bounciness is one, friction is zero. Determines how heavy this object is. I am going to make it a bit of a lighter object as well. All right, let's go ahead and save all that. And for the walls, we'll make testing it easier too. Uh, events, not so much. Physics, yes. Cannot move is what we want. The material for the walls, we want zero friction. No friction, no thank you. That all looks good. Let's double check that we did the ball. Yep, yep, and yep. All right, let's give this a shot. And ah, uh, ooh, ooh, that was a bad hit. Oh, it's going wild. Let's try without gravity. Boom. So, for this style of Pong game, you definitely don't want gravity to be involved. Ooh. Ooh, this is already addicting. And there's a ton of stuff you can do, right? You can implement a point system, um, championship round. If you really want, you can stop, and I don't do this, you could stop the paddles from going off screen, but it's, and I just, um, but it doesn't matter because the goal is to keep the ball on screen. So yeah, but there's a ton of stuff you can do, but this is a really simple way to kind of see how the physics and the game engines work. So again, I'm going to post all these assets in the description. You should make it, you should make something super cool or better. You should post about it. Tell me about it. Um, I'd love to check it out myself. If you're still watching this, if you are kind of watching this, you should hit like, you should hit subscribe. It is encouraging. It gives me warm fuzzies. It is nice um, to hit like and subscribe. Uh, that being said, I'm going to keep playing two-player Pong.